A while back, me and my colleague decided to try and recreate Assassin's Creed in Unity. And in about a month's time, we were able to create a basic prototype like this with core features like a free flow combat system with combos, counter attacks, enemy AI, etc. And a parkour and climbing system with which the player can traverse the level. So in this video, I'll show you how we implemented it and explain the challenges that we faced so that it will be helpful for you if you want to implement these features in your own games. So first we created a simple third person controller in Unity and then we added blocking running animations and used a blend tree to blend between these two animations. I have a complete tutorial on YouTube that covers how to create a third person controller from scratch. So I'm not going to go into the detail of how a third person controller is implemented. I'll put a link in the description if you want to learn more about how to implement a third person controller. So once the third person controller is done, the next step is to build a parkour and climbing system, which is the most unique feature of the Assassin's Creed games. So to be honest with you, I didn't have to build this from scratch because I had already created a parkour and climbing system for my game programming course on Udemy. So I could just reuse that system and integrate it to the level that we made. But let me give you a brief explanation on how the parkour and the climbing system was implemented. So for the parkour system, we started by creating an environment scanner for detecting obstacles in front of the player. So it uses two raycasts to scan the environment. So the first one is a horizontal raycast to detect the obstacle in front of the player. And the second one is a vertical raycast to detect the height of the obstacle. So we need the height of the obstacle to select the parkour action that we are going to perform. So for example, for a tall obstacle like this, the player should perform the climb up action. But for a short obstacle, the player can perform a jump up action like this. So after implementing the environment scanner, we downloaded the animations for step up, jump up and climb up parkour actions from Mixamo. And we started writing the code for performing these parkour actions. So the parkour actions are architected using scriptable objects like this. This will make the parkour system designer friendly so that any designers will be able to add and update parkour actions without touching the code. So the parkour actions will be created like this by adding a scriptable object. And these parkour actions will be added to a list in the parkour controller. And when the player finds an obstacle in front of him, he'll select the parkour action based on the type and height of the obstacle. So now the player is able to perform the parkour action when there is an obstacle in front of her. But the problem is, our animation will be designed for a specific height. But the obstacle can be of different heights, right? So for example, here we have two obstacles with different height, but we want to be able to perform the same climb up animation for both these obstacles. So the question is, how can we adapt the climb up animation to work with both the obstacles? To solve this, we use a technique called target matching. This will allow us to move the character in such a way that a hand or foot reaches a certain place at a certain time in the animation. So if we take the example of our climb up animation, we want the player's hand to reach the edge of the obstacle at this point in the animation. So we can use target matching to do that. So to the parkour action scriptable object, I added target matching parameters like the body part to match and the time between which the matching should happen. And then I call the match target function while the parkour action is being performed. So this function will do the target matching for us while the parkour action is being performed. So after implementing target matching, as you can see that the climb up animation works properly for both the obstacles, even though their heights are different. So with that, we are done with the parkour system. So next we have to implement the climbing system. So first, we build a climbing network, which is a network of ledges on which the player can hang. Here, the connection between the ledges indicate that the player can jump from one ledge to another. So each ledge stores all the neighboring ledges to which the player can jump. For the ledge to ledge jumps, I have four different animations for the up, down, left and right directions. And I also use target matching while playing the jumping animation 
to make sure that the player's hand correctly reaches the other ledge. Then I also added shimmy actions so that the player can move on larger ledges like this. And finally, I added the ability to climb up and drop down to a ledge if it's placed on the top of the obstacle. So this is a basic overview of the implementation. If you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to build the system, then you can check out our course on Udemy called Unity Parkour and Climbing System. It covers how to build the system from scratch by learning core gameplay programming skills. I'll put a link to it in the description if you are interested. So after implementing the parkour and climbing system, next you want to make the game look more like Assassin's Creed. So first we downloaded a free model of Altair from Sketchfab and made him the hero of a game. Next step was to create a level that was traversable using the parkour and climbing system. But the problem is, creating a level like the one in Assassin's Creed takes a lot of effort and none of us are professional 3D modelers. So we decided to create a low poly level. We also came across this video by Thomas Brish where they create a low poly Assassin's Creed level in Unity. So we took some inspiration from it and we built a low poly level like this in Blender. Once it was completed, we imported the level to Unity and started adding colliders to it so that the player can traverse it using parkour. We also added networks of climbing ledges on building prefabs so that the player can climb on it. So once everything was complete, we had a level like this which the player can traverse using the parkour and climbing system. So the next step is to create the combat system. So let me try to explain how the implementation was done. So there are two considerations we had in mind while creating the combat system. Firstly, we wanted to build a modular combat system that can be used for both the player and the enemy characters. Secondly, we wanted the combat system to be data driven so that any designers can add and edit attacks and create different combos for different characters without touching the code. So with these two considerations in mind, we started implementing the combat system. So first we added a sword to the player's hand and we implemented the functionality for drawing and sheathing the sword. So once the player has drawn the sword, he should be able to attack. So next we started implementing the attacks. We downloaded a few attack animations from Mixamo and we architected the attacks using scriptable objects and wrote the code for performing the attack animation. So now the player can perform the attack animation, but the problem is the enemy is not affected by the attack. So to fix this, we had to add a collider on the sword and we made the enemy play a hit animation when the sword's collider enter their body. But we had to make sure that the sword was only enabled for a short time while the player is performing the attack. Otherwise, the enemy will play the hit animation when the player runs into him with the sword like this. So we don't want that. So we could fix this by only enabling the sword for a short period of time while the attack is being performed. So to achieve this, what we did was we split the attack into three states, wind up, impact, and cooldown. Wind up is the preparation of the attack. Impact is the part where the player swings the sword and cooldown is the part where the player pulls the sword back after the attack. So once we split the attack into three states, we can make sure that the collider is only enabled during the impact state of the attack. So splitting the attacks into different states will also be useful when we implement things like combos and counter attacks and all. So next we wanted to implement combos. So we start by creating a list of attacks that can be assigned from the inspector. So this will allow us to easily drag and drop attacks to this list and create different combos for different characters. So next, to perform the combo, we just have to check if the player is in the cooldown state of an attack and if he pressed the attack input again. So this is how the combo system turned out. So now our player can attack and perform combos but the enemy doesn't do anything. He just stands there and takes hits. 
so we need to implement the enemy AI next so we use the state machine to handle the enemy AI state so each state will be a separate script like this and will handle one of the behaviors of the enemy so first we implemented the idle state so this is a state where the enemy haven't seen the player in this state the enemy will stand still or walk around the level if we have assigned a patrol path which is just a list of points like this so here the enemy movement is handled by using a nav mesh so we just had to define the points and the nav mesh agent will automatically find the optimal path between one point to another while avoiding obstacles so next if the player enters the enemy's field of view while the enemy is in the idle state then we changed the enemy's state to chase and made the enemy chase the player and if the enemy gets close to the player from the chase state then we'll switch to the attack state and attack the player so now we just have three states for the enemy idle chase and attack and this will make the enemy chase the player and attack when he spots the player so this will work fine if there is only a single enemy but when there are multiple enemies all of them will attack the player at the same time like this and this will make it impossible to fight multiple enemies so assassin's creed games solves this by using a type of combat system called free flow combat so in this type of combat systems the enemies will circle the player and will only attack him one at a time so this will make the player feel powerful since he's fighting many enemies at once but the thing is the player is only fighting one enemy at a time so it's kind of like an illusion to make the player feel powerful while fighting multiple enemies so to implement the free flow combat we created a new state called combat movement so in this state the enemies will stop at a short distance from the player and circle around the player like this and then we'll pick one of the enemies who's circling and we'll let them attack the player so this is how the combat looks like after we implemented free flow combat so you can see that all the enemies doesn't attack the player at the same time instead they'll attack him one at a time finally we added some music and sound effects to polish the game and here is a small playthrough of the final prototype So overall, this project was a great learning experience for us. We were able to recreate some of the core features from the Assassin's Creed game. And the best thing is, we implemented everything in a modular way so that we could easily take it and plug it into another game project if you wanted. And by the way, if you'd like to learn more about game programming and be able to create things like this on your own, then feel free to check out our Udemy course. It's a great course if you want to take your game programming skill from a beginner to an intermediate level. So, thanks a lot for watching. Let us know if there is any other game that you would like us to try and recreate. And be sure to leave a like on the video before you leave. So, I'll see you in the next video.